Friends, do you know that we face in this world not only trouble, but even warfare? And the enemies that we face ultimately are not flesh and blood, but even unseen enemies that would be uh, arrayed against the Lord himself, as foolish as that is, against the Lord and against those who are connected to the Lord. That's us. So, well, we have a, a bit of a target on our back as we attempt to see the kingdom of God move forward. And we need to fight. We need to actually fight in a spiritual way. And part of that is to sing the Psalms that God has given us, uh, Psalms of warfare. Here's one of them, Psalm 83. O God, do not keep silence. Do not hold your peace or be still, O God. You see, we need God to actually speak. His word is power. And, and part of the victory that that would come to us would have to come through the word of Almighty God. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. They're not silent. No, they've got, they've got noise. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They also have plans. They lay crafty plans against your people. And they do this not just as isolated individuals, but they work together as teams. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come. Let us wipe them out as a nation. Of course, talking about Israel, but we make the connection to the church today. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire with one accord against you. They make a covenant. So we, we see the connection between God's covenant people and the Lord himself. They come against the Lord. That means they come against us because we're together. And all these various nations of old that were against Israel could be mentioned here. They were surrounded by those who wanted to see them wiped off the map. Even with modern Israel, we certainly see that today, but we see that with the church as well. So we need God to actually speak, but then to secondly, accomplish his victorious will, his great plan. See, God from the beginning has had a plan. He does all that he wills. He accomplishes that. We call upon his name. We sing to him, asking him to accomplish his will. And so first the psalmist recalls the days from the books, uh, the book of Judges, when in the days of Gideon, in the days of Deborah, uh, enemies were arrayed against God's people and how the Lord brought victory. Uh, that, that is remembered, but then we also ask for God now to do this. That was, would have been in the days of the psalmist, but also beyond that now today. And let's move it towards our time period as we think about this. See, see, there's a call for the Lord to destroy those who would destroy us. And we think, but, but can we actually say that? Let's listen carefully to what's said here. It says, oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, as the flame sets the mountains ablaze, so may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. So think of the force of God in this wind that would come upon the earth. Think of a hurricane, that tempest, this wind of God. But there's also this idea of the wind of God, the breath of God, the spirit of God coming upon us, first humbling us. Maybe we used to be enemies of God and his people. And then that hurricane of God came against us and, and uh, we were brought low. We were humbled, right? And then filled with that spirit by which we can fight the good fight and live the life of love together. It says, fill their faces with shame, humble them, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Yes, that's what we want. That may be the surprise that our enemies don't understand. Yet we, we want them to be defeated in their foolish and rash warfare against Almighty God. Of course, they can never win that. But we actually want to see them brought within the household of faith, brought by the wind of God to know him, to call upon his name, and to experience the life of salvation together with us. We want them to desert the foolish foe and come onto our into our troop 
and to be part of the worshiping, singing people of God. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace, that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. We don't want to see just final judgment upon those who might be against us. No, we want to see them actually brought to a sensible and marvelous love for God and for his people. Father, thank you that we've been brought into the household of faith. Thank you for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has accomplished such a, a beautiful holy will for the glory of your name. And help us, O oh Lord, to be agents of bringing the good news to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.